and internal differences that continue to haunt the Bharatiya Janata Party and the Congress, especially in Karnataka. For the ruling Congress, the tussle over the candidates for the Kolar seat uh, uh, continues to play out a day after it exploded with the threat of uh, by five legislators to resign. The chief minister, along with top Congress leaders, held a meeting in Bengaluru to iron out differences between the two factions from Kolar, following which Cabinet Minister MC Sudhakar, who had threatened to resign yesterday with four legislators, apologized for the threat. Yesterday, Higher Education Minister MC Sudhakar and two MLAs and two MLCs threatened to resign if the Kolar seat was given to Cabinet Minister and seven-time MPKH Muniapa's son-in-law, following which senior leaders got into firefighting mode. But even as the Kolar tussle is being resolved, and negated supporters of octogenarian former chief minister Veerappa Moili, including a sitting MLA, have written a letter to the high command to give Moili the ticket for Chikbalapur. The Congress is considering a younger candidate for the seat. Meanwhile, on the BJP side, Sears uh, 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 a jolt for the Darwad seat after Veerashaiva Linga at Sears spoke out against the candidature of Union Minister Prala Joshi. But party veteran B.S. Yadurappa, who has a strong hold on the Linga at Mats in the state, quickly doused that controversy and declared categorically his support for Prala Joshi. The issues uh, is seen as a the issue is seen as a result of sabre rattling between factions in the BJP, which are already contending with uh, troubles from leaders like K.S. Ishwarappa, who will contest as an independent candidate against Yadurappa's son and party candidate Raghavendra in Shimoga. Remember, today was. Uh, nominations opening up meanwhile it was the first day for filing nominations for the second phase in which large parts of karnataka including bengaluru will vote on the 26th of april and first off the block to file those nominations were congress's lone incumbent mp in the state dk suresh in bengaluru rural and jds's lone mp in the state prajwal revanna from hassan these were the reactions that came out on all those faction troubles as well as nomination filings through the day ರಾಜಕೀಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾವ ಕಾರಣಕ್ಕೂ ಪ್ರಹ್ಲಾದ್ ಜೋಶಿ ಅವರನ್ನ ಬದಲಾವಣೆ ಮಾಡೋ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಉದ್ಭವ ಆಗುದಿಲ್ಲ ಈ ಭಾಗದ ಒಬ್ಬ ಜನಪ್ರಿಯ ನಾಯಕರವರು ಬಹಳ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಅಂತರದಲ್ಲಿ ಅವರು ಚುನಾವಣೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಗೆದ್ದೇ ಗೆಲ್ತಾರೆ ಅನ್ನೋ ವಿಶ್ವಾಸ ನನಗಿದೆ ಲಿಂಗದೇಶ್ವರ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಅವರ ಹತ್ರ ನಾನೇ ಖುದ್ದಾಗಿ ದೂರವಾಣಿ ಮೂಲಕ ಮಾತನಾಡ್ತೇನೆ ತಪ್ಪು ಗ್ರಹಿಕೆ ಆಗಿದೆ ಅವನ್ನು ಮನವರಿಕೆ ಮಾಡುವಂತಹ ಪ್ರಾಮಾಣಿಕ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ನಾನು ಮಾಡ್ತೇನೆ We have with us Mr. M.C. Sudhakar, so thank you so much for joining us. You have been one of the ones leading the entire rebellion in the Kolar Congress. How has it changed now? I won't say that I have uh, I am leading the rebellion or anything. It is a collective uh, view. And uh, whatever incident happened, uh, we express our regrets. Uh, I know uh, it has affected our party's image also. I command has taken the has viewed this uh, uh, incident very seriously. They have warned us and uh, party our uh, honorable CM and deputy CM was also the party president. They also have viewed this issue very seriously. and uh, we exp expressed our regrets and uh, uh, we have uh, promised them that such incidents will not happen and we have uh, apologized to whatever has happened yesterday so does that mean that you are okay with uh, mr kh muniyappa's son in law being granted the ticket see it is uh, whatever issues were there we have put forth before them and uh, in fact they are aware about all the issues and uh, they have said that uh, ultimately party's victory is important we will take a decision in the interest of the party there was no uh, names discussed in this meeting whatever decision is given by our uh, two leaders from the state and the high command we said we'll abide by that and they also have said that winability is important party's uh, number of seats what we have to win from karnataka is very crucial so in that uh, interest we have said that we will abide by whatever decision you take so even if the decision is not in your favor you will abide by it see it's not the it's not a question of any decision in my favor or anybody's favor it has to be in the favor of uh, the party and uh, winability is the primary aspect in this so uh, party said that you leave it to us with our, with our vast experience we will give a 
suitable decision which we have to be we have to abide by that and which we said yes we will follow your directions fresh descent brewing in chikbalapur as well what are your thoughts on that see we have uh, three strong candidates from chikbalapur we have one former cm and former central minister most respected virap moili sir is there and uh, we have our shushankar reddy former minister from the state and a very senior uh, uh legislator he was unfortunately lost this election so he is also a serious contender and uh, raksha ramaya who was the youth congress president so he is also a serious contender as of now party has not taken any decision with regard to chikbalapur uh, uh parliamentary seat so naturally yeah uh, uh, aspirants will uh, uh, try to exert pressure that you have to give ultimately uh, they are all loyal party workers and uh, party leaders so i don't see i don't foresee any issue at as far as chikbalapur is concerned my final question do you see all of this dissent hurting the party's prospects ahead of the lok sabha election yeah i too feel and i i i felt i regret for what has happened because being a responsible minister i think uh, it was uh, a mistake on our part i i i accept that i accept that ultimately if party is there i am there if party is not there i am not there so I feel sorry for right, that. That was one of those cabinet ministers who had threatened to resign yesterday. Uh, Pratibha Raman now joins us live along with Vasudha Venugopal who tracks the BJP very closely. Also with me political analyst Manisha Priyam to put this whole rebel trouble for both sides into perspective. But very quickly Pratibha, they haven't yet decided on the candidate for Kolar. No, not yet. Well, they did have a meeting and uh, most of the sulking leaders did mention that uh, they will be abiding by the decision that will be taken by the high command of the party. At this point in time, the state leadership did not reveal any kind of names. But then what we hear is that by tomorrow, there would be a standard decision that would be taken in this regard. But in the meantime, yes, rebellion brewing in Chikbalapur as well. Whether there would be a meeting held on that front as well right. is, uh, uh, is still something that is not discussed yet. But yes, a lot of hurdles to be crossed as far as the Congress is concerned. Yeah. That's right. That's not just for the Congress. Let me just go across to Vasudha as far as the BJP is concerned. A lot of saber rattling happening, Vasudha, between the different factions of the BJP. Uh, we saw Ishwarappa go out and yesterday the comment from Veerashaiva Lingayat Sears and then immediate dousing of the fire by B.S. Yadurappa seems very in interesting. How does the party high command see all this? Well, I did speak to some BJP leaders, Veera, and you know that Lingayat and Veerashaiva politics have always been uh, somewhat at the center of Karnataka political campaigns. We've all the, always seen this uh, Panchamashali reservation, Lingayat as special religion. But, you know, when the BJP leadership does not seem to be that bothered about this particular thing because uh, Prahla Joshi is a senior minister in the Modi uh, cabinet. He's been a four-term MP. And this particular guy, Fakira Dinleshwar ji, is uh, seen as uh, not really representative of the entire Lingayat community. And Yadurappa himself has come forward and said that, you know, if there are any misgivings, he would be available to talk to them. Mr. Joshi himself, I understand uh, from people close to him, has been reaching out to different sections of the Lingayat and also Veera Shaiva and Bokaliga communities. Veer, Lingayat especially because Dharwad is uh, seen as uh, predominantly having a large number of Lingayat uh, uh, population and Mr. Joshi himself is a Brahmin. So they don't seem to be that uh, concerned about this particular thing but clearly uh, the matter is under watch and I feel this is also flexing, flexing of muscles from, uh, the Veera, from the Lingayat group considering that Congress has a government there and also from Mr. Yadurappa himself showing that uh, he actually pulls a lot of strings, especially when it comes to Lingayat politics in Karnataka. Right, that's right. He pulls a lot of strings when it comes to Lingayat politics in Karnataka. But Manisha Priyam, who's tracked Karnataka very closely, uh, you know, in a sense, Manisha, for the BJP, it seems like it was two steps forward, four steps back. It's a return to the old BS Yadurappa legacy with you have Janardhan Reddy back on the fray. Uh, do you see that old frictions also playing out in these parliamentary elections for the BJP? Uh, first of all, I feel that it's definitely uh, come back, Mr. Yadirappa. And uh, therefore, in the state arena, we will see a strengthening of Mr. Yadirappa. Uh, remember, the seers flexing their muscles actually strengthens the arm of Yadirappa to say, the, look, I'm going to do local consultations and I'm going to do the bridge gap work between uh, the Lingayat seers and whatever is the state politics. So the actually the Lingayat seers coming out strengthens uh, uh, the negotiational room for Mr. Yadirappa. 
Also, the fact that he's been able to get Chetar back. Now, this is a time that he's got to strengthen the politics of his sons. He's got to get the arena back under his control. So this looks like a state election for Mr. Yadirappa, and he is going to not leave any opportunity. Even the important and favorites of the central leadership will be able to get their victory route only with the support of Mr. Yadirappa. So a strengthening of state leadership there. As far as the Congress Party is concerned, I see this as a very important game. Uh, you know, the, Mr. Sudhakar coming in and saying the high command. Now, the Delhi high command is a very weakened high command. And the Delhi high command puts and reposes its trust in Mr. D.K. Shivkumar. But on the ground, I think the most important leader is the current uh, chief minister. And this means the high command and power sharing with Mr. D.K. Shivkumar. How does that negotiation happen between two important leaders? So I say that this time around, just before the Lok Sabha elections, right. it's even, Stephen, in the state of Karnataka, on both sides, power equations really fairly evenly balanced out. And in these leaders coming out and making and you know showing their shenanigans, uh, one doesn't really know at whose behest they are doing it. And who's going to ultimately right. get the balance of power at the state level? In both cases, however, I can conclude that it's a definite weakening of the central hold on what the state leaders are going to do. That's very interesting that you put it that way, Manisha Priyam. It could well be containing and keeping that balance of power that could eventually uh, prove who's going to march ahead in Karnataka. But very interesting aspects there. Remember the Kolar tussle is still not completely over till it's over. Remember, one needs to wait for the candidate announcements across the board. Two seats still remaining, Kolar and Chikbalapur, as far as the Congress is concerned. We'll keep a close watch of all those developments. But thanks very much, Manisha Priyam and Pratibha Raman, as well as Vasudha, for joining us.